Welcome back, Hookaholics. Another edition of the Foul Mouth Fishing YouTube. So, a little bit overdue. I got a little bit of a Dick's Haul here, a nice big bag with uh, some items to go into our uh, July, Christmas in July giveaway. Um, some of the things in here I'm hoping kind of reflect some of the influence that I got from you all with my last video asking for what were your ideal uh, winter baits. And at the end of this video, I'm going to pose another question and hopefully get your influence to buy some more baits to put into that July, uh, uh, Christmas in July gift um, by getting some of your input on another style. And I'll go out and I'll try to pick a few that match that. So, but lead us not into uh, pandering onto this. Let's uh, crack into it. I did, I did more than one shopping trip, so I got a couple of different uh, things. First off... All right, so I got two of these. Um, I saw, actually they didn't have these and I had to actually uh, have the guys at Dick's order them in and uh, save them for me. Um, unfortunately, they only had the one color available. I will go back when they have the other options and the other colors. But I got two of the Berkeleys and these are the Bucktooth Beaver. This is like a, a cross between a wake bait uh, a lipless crankbait, and uh, sort of like a whopper plopper, but uh, crack it open for you here. I'll crack this one open, I'll save that one. Hint. <laughs> um, but it's a really cool bait. It's a larger profile, sort of, you know, niche kind of gimmicky bait. But the cool thing about this, this little beaver bait, let me stab myself in the thumb is, first off, super sharp sticky hooks. It's got little yellow buck teeth painted on the bill. So it's a lipped crankbait, but it is a floating bait as well. The thing about this, as you work this, you can work this as a jerk bait. Um, by twitching it, you can work it like a spook top water. You can work it like a crankbait. It'll submerge, go subsurface a few feet. Um, it's got this little flat, spade tail almost like um, you know like a willow leaf uh, but it's it's hard plastic textured to look sort of like the leather of a beaver which I actually had a beaver outside my house at one point which was kind of startling considering where I live but nevertheless super sharp sharp hooks smaller hooks than I think I would have expected on a bait this size maybe one size two sizes smaller than I would have thought but nevertheless, um, I think I might change out and go for a larger hook in the back just because of this being a hard material, not a soft material. So folding up and collapsibility is not really there on this tail. And to make sure that I get a good pin of the hook, I might go up another two sizes or one size on these, um, these trebles in the back. Um, this is a really cool bait. If you know the Fishing with Norm channel, he actually did a, uh, a little expose on this, um, and he went out and caught a couple of large fish by a dam using this. And I have a dam that I fish a lot, and it has beaver in it, so I'm thinking this will emulate that. It'll emulate a, mo a mouse, um, uh, chipmunks, raccoons, uh, nutria, if you were out you know, down south Louisiana, uh, Florida way. So I think, I think this will be an interesting little bait. It is kind of, you know artistically catch the fishermen but I think it has potential so we'll see come spring when the water warms up and uh, we'll see what that's like they are not a cheap bait at $15.99 each but uh, well worth it I think if you're gonna look at the overall artistic nature of it and the fact that it is multi-use you can like I said you can draw it down like a crankbait you can work it on the top if you run it on slack line you can get it to walk back and forth 
and give you that nice walking action. There's a lot of ways to fish that particular bait. Uh, trip number two. Uh, alrighty. I got, again, sticking with that same kind of, uh, you know, analog baits that look like things, I picked up three of the Lunker Hunt's Battle Beetles. So these are very similar uh, to the soft plastic versions um, that we have, those little, be those little beetles, and like they had the dragonfly and they had the spider. Uh, these, these are very much like those, but these are again a hard plastic and a crankbait. And the interesting thing that I like about this, not only the fact that it's got a lip on it, a little square bill, single joint, there's that little, it's not quite a square bill, I mean it's, a, it's lipped, but it is ellipsed, so it's oval shaped, um, and it's got two trebles feathered, and they're, they're basically the feet. So I've taken um, soft body frogs and done this where I've uh, undone the frog's feet and replaced it with feathered treble hooks um, in the past when I was younger. So this is kind of an idea that I think has it's been out there, but I never saw anybody put it in a mass, you know, into production uh, on a scale of a, an actual name company. Hard plastic again. These are a little different. These are um, 2.25 inches. They weigh a half ounce each. Um, this one, here, this is the timber beetle, which is kind of like a yellow natural color. The one I opened up is in the pattern that they're calling canopy. Um, this to me is, you know, straight out of Cicadia. Um, I think that'll work well. And then I got this blue just for, you know, black blue always works in, in conditions, lighting conditions the right way. Um, this is called the cobalt, cobalt blue. So that I think is nifty. They're not bad. They're only about $9 a piece, but I thought they were nifty. Again, uh, this just goes to my, my box that I'm going to be building with all of my um, more, um, the baits that look more like the profiles of the actual animal. Not just your standard soft plastics, but the ones that actually have more texture and continuity and, and characteristics of the, uh, the animals or the forge that they're trying to emulate. So I'm going to be building a specific, uh, a specific Busby just for baits like these. So that'll go to that collection there. All right, uh, I got a few little things. I got some wax worms. Everybody knows what they are, a little package of wax worms. And what else did I get? There's something else in here, but I can't find it, so we'll move on to the, the mainstay. This is the more important shopping trip. So this is most of the stuff that I got uh, that I normally just refill this time of year before spring comes, and also the items that you guys influenced me to get so that I can add them to uh, our giveaway. First off, I want to say I did in fact find more of the Firecraw uh, jackhammers by Z-Man. So indeed, that's going into that box. So along with the jackhammer, you're going to have the cross eyes, you're going to have the elite, and I think it's a standard all in that Firecraw pattern, along with the one in there that I think is a different color scheme. Um, I picked up because I had a sale where it was buy five, get five clearance. So I got some KVD Perfect Plastics. I got the Ned Ochos in Red Bug, which has always been a good color for me. Love that, that red, that draws out. And of course, uh, Okeechobee, which is the black bluish color. Um, you, can't be, you can't be black blues, red, the Okeechobee Craw. Got that green pumpkin on the bottom and that blue, that hue that comes through. Always, always an awesome, awesome bait. So I got those buy one, get one, basically. And because why the heck not, here's another one in Moon Juice. Uh, this one is a blue with like a crystal, um, like a white milky color to it, which I like. It adds a little more natural bluegill kind of uh, color to it because you get a little bit of hue of green and you see that blue comes through and that pearl on the bottom really accents and gives you like a really good bluegill profile. So I'll put those on some net heads um, for my for my uh, early fishing and my obviously my post spawn fishing, my bed fishing. I think that'll be uh, definitely profitable when it comes to catching. And 
And I got a, another pack, because they were, again, buy one, get one. These are in just standard green pumpkin. So the four packs of the Perfect Plastics KVD Ochos uh, for the Ned Rings, Ned Rig Ochos. Uh, buy one, get one, buy one, get one. So that was pretty cool. Uh, I got some of my favorite brand and my favorite baits. So I also got, again, part of that whole buy... Uh, Buy one, get one, or buy five, get five of equal value. I've got some Gary Yamamoto's. These are the Fat Ica. These are basically like a tube, um, but it's like, these are really good on a uh, stand-up jig head. They're really amazing, again, for a little bit larger, a much larger profile on a Ned Rig. Um, they've got this, just this interesting little, you know, these frills. It's a solid soft plastic, so it's not like a tube where it's hollow in the middle. You can't put a tube jig in. It's solid on the bottom. But you can rig these Texas. You can rig these on a net head, and they are amazing. So I got these in the, uh, in the watermelon with black flake. Um, that was a good deal on sale. Uh, $7.99. They're normally like twi twice that much. Uh, I got the Flappin' Haws. These I haven't had in a long time. They're something that I've really been needing to re-up with. But these are the Gary Yamamoto's Flappin' Hogs. I like these for punching through mat cover, stuff like that. They have enough bulk, and you put a, a Texas rig pinned, um, Texas rigged um, tungsten weight, and uh, you can get these down through cover. And these air-filled flaps uh, float. This floats as well. You get tons of action off these little bubbles here on the on the front appendages and it does leave a bubble trail as it's running down through you know your, your lily pads or your grass or whatever you're punching through on the top surface these these I've always found um, helpful and I don't know why I haven't had them in stock I just haven't had them in my in my my tackle supply as of late so I just saw those and I said I gotta get some gotta get some so let's see again some more jackhammers. These are the stealth blades. So these are the ones with that clear, I think it's Lexan polycarbonate. Um, I don't think it's an, it might be acrylic, but I believe it's poly, it's Lexan polycarbonate. But it's a, uh, a clear chatterbait head on the jackhammer's body and jackhammer's hook setup. Um, just the idea is you don't see the blade flashing as much. You're just going to see the actual bait in the head. So I got those. I got these in the uh, what they call their Stealth Blades Clearwater Shad because shad minnows, always good forge. Grab two of those. And along with the, uh, the Fire Craw over there, I got uh, two more Fire Craws because get them while you can, you know? Um, so I got those. And, uh, yeah, I might just throw in, a, throw in a Stealth Blade in the Shad for you because why the heck not, right? See, a couple more things as we go through. Oh, another set of the flapping hogs in green pumpkin magic. So that was the green pump or the um, watermelon and black flake. This is green pumpkin with the uh, purple flakes in it. That's also pretty cool. Got that part of the buy one get one. And another uh, fat fat Ica in green pumpkin black flake. So that's the other uh, like tubish style bait. I got a pair of those. Um, I got myself. Some young dingers in cranberry, because you know, Texas rig worms always catch fish. And I got plum apple in the Gary Yamamoto's five inch Senkos. So, plum apple's an interesting color. It's not like a June bug, it's not like a red bug, it's not like a, a black blue, it's not, it's just this, this weird purplish red hue, and it's got green and blue flakes in it that give you this kind of, sometimes it almost looks gold as it's, as it's underwater. Um, but these wacky rigged, um, I just love them. There's, there's nothing that floats and reacts on the downfall better than a Gammy, uh, Gary Yamamoto Soko, Senko. Um, they just always have, I don't know, they're, the, the plastic material, their, their, their proprietary design of their material is just bar non excellence. So I got those for my worms and whatnot. Part of what you all gave as interesting comments on what I said was, you know, asking what your go-to winter baits would be. Um, we got ourselves a Rapala, uh, six-foot diving, floating, 
Rapala in the Delta Craw color. Um, you know, this goes down six foot. It's a floating bait, so again, as a, as a square bill, if you get caught in brush and cover underneath, just let it back itself out. It'll float back up. Hopefully, it'll clear itself. Um, that's always helpful. Um, I got myself a Strike King's Banshee in uh, the, the orange belly crawfish color. So this is just your big blade spinner bait. I like that. This is a heavy one. Uh, this is, um, I think, three-eighths? Half ounce. Half ounce. So it's a half ounce uh, uh, spinning bait, spinner. I like this. I like this crawl pattern. I think it's going to be uh, a killer come, uh, you know, when the water warms up. So I'm looking forward to stocking up ahead of time for all this stuff. Just getting ahead of the game, you know? Crawl. Let's see. I got some replacement blades. These are the switch blades. Uh... So fast and easy assemblies to change your chatter bla bait blades out. Um, I, I, I want to give them a try. There's there's things that kind of I'd like to try with like uh, uh, the blades on the Thunder Cricket. I'd like to see how taking these and actually putting them in a vise and a pair of flat pliers and bending them to different shapes. I want to see what kind of different uh, characteristics I can manipulate this thin tin and for you know cheap five dollar set of blades and you get I think six in here or five um, I thought it was interesting to uh, to give it a shot I can bend these if I break it I'm not sad and then throw this on the chatterbait and see what happens see if I can get it to do more of a sway rather than the standard vibration see if that changes anything influences fish anyway um, you know just experimenting we'll see what that's like did not have but I will get, because I've ordered it online, um, as an homage uh, to our friends over there at Bee Fishing. Uh, so uh, they, did, they did not have the Bandit 200s, but in lieu of that, temporarily, I got a Strike Kings Extra Deep. Uh, this is their uh, Extra Deep series, goes 10 to 12 foot. It's in that white with the shad spot that I know Brett and Chris love. Uh, they like the Bandit. 200. This one is obviously just a Strike King. I will get a Bandit 200 and I will put it in that box as part of the July giveaway because I wouldn't. It wouldn't be a giveaway without it, right, guys? So uh, it's got a nice little chartreuse uh, belly on this one too. Hard to see there because I'm not going to take it out of the package. But this is going in the giveaway as well. Uh, another thing that was uh, said, and like I said, I'm putting that Rapala, that Rapala um, craw. Two of them, one for you, one for me. So uh, I've also got a loud rattling rip and wrap. So from uh, you know our friends over there at No Redemption Outdoors gave the suggestion. He loves the rip and wraps, and so I got some rip and wraps. <laughs> so I got your standard, you know that. That chartreuse um, lateral line, shad spot, right in the middle. So I'm going to throw that in. This is a uh, two and a half inch, half ounce, variable depth. So that's good. Tick that over the grass, I'm sure. No redemption, you tell me. Should work well. And I got a pair for myself. One in that, in that typical, like, I've always had, when I've used my, um, my standard lipless crankbaits, uh, my rattle traps have been the blue and silver or the all red or the all copper. So I got myself the blue and silver in this just to give it a, a, a shot, a change. And of course, one for me, one for you. And finally, uh, an Extreme Actions wrap from Rapala. Uh, this one is a four to six inch jerk bait. I think that is awesome. I think that's gonna work out good. This is in Glass Ghost. Hopefully one of you will catch a monster on that in the cold water come next season. And I got uh, one more six foot uh, swimming depth. This is the um, the brat in the six depth, uh, excuse me, in the six foot depth. And this is the balsa. So I love balsa baits. So this is a balsa, uh, balsa wood square bill crankbait. Um, this is in the delta crawl pattern again, but there's just nothing like the retrieve and the wobble in a balsa bait. So, throw all that in there. So you guys benefited with uh, 
quite a few little new new baits. Again, they um, the the 200 is coming. It'll go in. Uh, you got yourself a bunch of more cool baits for us to add. Thank you all for adding your input. Yes, I'm throwing in I'm throwing in a beaver into your box too. So uh, we're going to uh, add this to our bag of goodies to go out for Christmas in July. If you stayed this long, thank you very much. Has there any been any of these baits that uh, kind of catch your eye? Um, soft plastics. I don't know if any of you have had anything with the uh, the, uh, the flapping hogs. I I don't know. I just like them. They're just a different profile. It's like a combination between you know a beaver tail uh, punching bait and sort of like a crawl and uh, almost like a brush hog all kind of blended together. You get similar actions from those three baits all kind of into that one. And the bubble trail that puts off is quite unique. Um, that all said, I hope all this entices you to enter into that contest when I offer to uh, tell you how to enter. In the meantime, let's go for the next question. Um, since it's gonna be February, let's do finesse. What finesse baits, what is your go-to finesse when the bite is not there, when you're having to downsize, when you're just dealing with, if you're a co-angler in tournaments and you're throwing behind the, the actual angler, um, what are those finesse things that you throw out there to trigger, to get the bites when they're not going after the, the high velocity, the, the really moving, moving baits? What's your go-to? What brands? What colors? What names? What styles? What intrigues you? Because that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pick a bunch of uh, finesse baits and add them to our Christmas in July based on your comments and your suggestions. Um, I appreciate all the, uh, the correspondence we all have, and uh, I just wanted to say thank you. Uh, kind of rushing through this because I got a lot to do. I got a whole day of putting up smoke detectors in the house and all this other stuff, and uh, I apologize, but... I like the fact that I got a little bit of chance to sit down and spend some time with you, and I appreciate you spending your time with me, because I know that's time is a very valuable thing. As always, from me to you, I'm much appreciation, uh, tight lines. I will catch you on the next cast, Hocaholics, and uh, peace. For the victory lap, though. Whoa, whoa. They ain't never seen nothing like